Welcome everybody. We're uh, doing the podcast, Legionnaire Podcast, episode three here with Grant once again. It's going to be a regular occurrence to have him up in here. <laughs> um, we couldn't get our other special guest, Ryan, a.k.a. Shells, in here, um, but hopefully we can get him in here next week. Hopefully a lot of big stuff happens uh, th- this week on uh, on WandaVision so we can have something to talk about. But then again, I don't I don't know if he does watch WandaVision or he not. He doesn't. Okay, so I uh, can't really talk to him about that one, but we don't have to worry about spoilers because he's not going to watch it. So anyways, <laughs> all right, so we got a lot of a lot of cool topics to talk about today. Um, uh, I, I know uh, the whole like Thursday show and then this show, uh, I'm going to try to do it on Tuesdays. Like I said, in, at the end of, I think it was last week, I said that I was going to start doing it just flat on Tuesdays. Uh, it, just because, you know, doing it Thursday, then Tuesday is kind of weird. There's not a lot. I mean, there is a lot to talk about, but it, you know, having a week's worth of content to talk about rather than, you know, like what, four or five days, it's a little bit better. Um, so anyways, uh, let's, let's get into the first topic. Uh, of course, it's always going to be WandaVision. Um, yep. well, at least, at least until after, you know, next week, uh, that's season. I think it's a season finale. I don't know. Like I, they haven't said anything about whether it's a season finale yet. It is the season finale. Yeah. Oh, they have. Okay. It, okay. It is it, this? I'm pretty sure because then we have a two week break and then it's uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier starting. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Cool. Mm. Yeah. This. I mean, March then April. I mean, they. They. You know, if you don't have streaming services, get some. Uh, whether it be Disney Plus and, you know, people don't want to do Disney Plus because they, they don't want to uh, miss out on. There, there's a big drain, like, uh, speak uh, going off on a little, not a tangent, but going off on a, a little sidebar real quick. All right, so there's people that I know and people that are generally of the mindset of, like, I don't want to watch any of the TV shows uh, because uh, I, and they don't want to watch any of the newer Marvel movies because of the fact they feel like they have to be uh invested in them in order to know what's going on kind of like kind of like when they had like agents of shield on like you generally like if you went into like was it iron man no when iron man 3 it was uh captain america winter soldier and you went straight in to uh um age of ultron you were hella confused as to like why are they there how they're there but it sets it up in a uh, agents of shield like why they're there because they they got a tip that you know they were that hydra had the the staff again so it's i can see people getting burnt out about you know trying to keep up with it but even then uh but anyways that's off on the tangent uh wandavision episode seven was actually phenomenal it was pretty cool we finally got to see uh was it monica rambo Monica, yeah, yeah. Okay, got so Sia Powers, yeah. yeah, she's she's photon well, now, or she has yeah. kind of kind of those. Um, and I did a little a little history lesson as far as uh, who who Monica Rambo is in the comics, um, and he, at least in the comic standpoint, uh, which people were talking about like she was going to be too powerful to be in the MCU just because of her power set, which is to manipulate uh, all forms of energy, kind of like Vulcan does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's more like l- long lines of like, she goes out like an out of, a, out of body experience, uh, to deal with these kind of like nightcrawler does when he goes yep. through his little, uh, brimstone dimension to, to, to transport himself into other places. Um, so, but she's able to base uh, on par, if not, you know, maybe more than, you know, a reality warper if it, if it deals with energy. So, but I don't think they're going to go that far into, uh, her power set, but she did come back into the hex and, you know, you got to see her be, be able to see the, the wavelengths and all that shit, uh, as far as, uh, you know, stuff she couldn't see before. So the, the hex literally changed her as she went at the third time, um, to get back in there. <clears throat> so I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> I enjoyed this episode because, you know, it finally set some certain things in place where I was like, well, you know, somebody could be behind the scenes, you know, kind of pulling the strings, which is making Wanda out to be the villain of the show. And and I was like, it's got to be somebody. Um, I didn't think it was going to be Agnes just because I, I felt like she was in the show for pure comedy. Right. Um, which is one of the reasons why I thought she was cast in the show in the first place. But it was yeah. actually nice, you know, to see somebody that has had these comedy element, you know, to her, 
to her stuff that she's done before, you know, be in this in this role where she can be a villain and I think really show off, you know, her capabilities as an actor. It's uh no, it was it was a nice surprise. I I thoroughly enjoyed the episode. Well, I mean, what was it? Uh I mean, I, I was trying to figure out what the, what the hell happened to Darcy because, you know, she's my favorite yeah. in the show and I was just like, okay, what what they, what they do to her? Like they we didn't get to see what she was and she was like what, an escape artist? Uh, so yeah. like vision was going to try to like, he's like, Hey, Hey, I, I know who you are. Hey, uh, help me out. And she was still in her trance, but he took her out of the trance. She's like, Oh, okay. That was kind of weird. Um, and they're basically like trying to get back and trying to, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. And if like Wanda can be taken out of this and he basically gets the full rundown of his history because she made it so that way he didn't know, or maybe it's not that she didn't let him know what, uh, you know, like bringing him back to life or <clears throat> I don't know how exactly that would go along with like her not letting him know, or he just didn't know because the mind stone isn't there like really. So well, she just didn't kind of, uh, bring that. In. I, I don't think, know. It's I think weird. what's happening is she's, uh, she's blocking those memories of his cause he knows exactly who she is. Yeah. It's probably a okay. bit of mi- mind manipulation. Yeah. Um, but he probably still has the memories. It's just whether or not, you know, Wanda can unlock those. Right, right. Whether, or whether we'll see them, you know, kind of unlocked in the in the last episode. <clears throat> right. Well. Cause... Right. So, do you think it was Wanda? Okay, I, I definitely need to preface this at the beginning, but you know, spoilers for anybody that's in here. Um, but at the same time, like, okay, so do you think it was, uh. What's her name? It's not Agnes. It's uh, God. What's her name? What's what's her name? A- it's not Agnes. What's her real name? Agatha. Okay, so do you think Agatha. it was you think it was Agatha that was trying to keep them away, like Darcy and Vision, or do you think it was? It could have been her. It could have been her because she saved Vision. Why would she want to keep him away? It doesn't make any sense. I don't get that. It had to have been it had to have been Agatha because of the fact that like she wants to keep because all right so the way that the comics go and the vision was it the vision and and Wanda storyline was like the two kids were basically like shards of Mephisto's essence yeah so and Agatha Harkness is actually like an like kind of like a, a she's a witch that basically serves under Mephisto. So, yep. and they even have the book of, uh, uh, what's the damn book? Uh, the book of, I can't remember what it is, but, uh, they had that, they had the book, they showed the book down there. So basically that, maybe that's a way for them to bring Mephisto in is basically like sacrificing her kids that weren't actually her kids. Uh, they were just like shards of Mephisto <laughs> by doing that. It, it brings him in uh, to the fold because we still haven't seen the, the secret person that they keep you know, saying that there's another person in there, uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna call him out as far as who is he playing. Um, so I well, we're up into episode. You know, this is gonna be the last one, or it should be the last one. You know, the yeah. finale episode. Um, I thoroughly believe that you know people are saying it could be Magneto. People are saying you know other characters. I don't think it's going to be any of the characters that people have been saying. I think personally it's going to be Doctor Strange. Because again, it's the whole inside of the hex is a reality warp. Really? Yeah. You know, he did say he's protecting is... our reality. Exactly. So Douchebag. it would make more yeah, it would make more sense for uh also he's he's been filming Doctor Strange, right? At, at um No. In Atlanta. No, that that wasn't one of the movies. One of the movies they were doing was, uh, um, they're doing Black well, Adam. They're doing Spot. Yeah, they're doing Spider Man Three. Spider Man Three, Black Adam, and I can't that remember the third started, one. Black Adam hasn't started filming yet, though. Yes, I have. Well, the Rock hasn't finished his training. Uh, they've already got. Well, I mean, maybe he hasn't started filming, but they've started set production. As far oh, as like okay. building everything, because you know my connections and s- stuff that I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, specifically right. today, actually. <laughs> so like they're um, you know they're a bit you well, know because I I knew they were doing Spider Man three, but Spider Man three 
is supposed to happen after Doctor Strange. Right? The the multiverse of madness is supposed to ha take place in the timeline before I don't the... know at this point. Like I'll have to look it up, but I think oh. I, I think it's gonna be I, I think multiverse of madness is gonna be the culmination of all this stuff that's going on that, that started uh that started with WandaVision. I think you know <clears throat> what's going on with uh Captain America Winter Soldier that might be affected by the events of WandaVision. And then it'll trickle into, you know, uh, uh, whatever the next Spider-Man movie is. And then the culmination of all this might lead into Multiverse of Madness. Um, so, and, and then, and then we'll Loki, get Spider too. Okay, that, that's we have too. Loki, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do we have Loki. So, with the Multiverse of Madness, we'll get a Spider-Verse film after. Because, obviously, with the, the, the Multiverse of Madness film, that's where, you know, you've seen Ryan Reynolds in the cast. You've seen... Right. Uh, You've seen uh, Tommy McGuire and Andrew Garfield in the cast, right? Uh, Which apparently seen... they've they've said that they're not actually. <laughs> they said that they're That's not. It's in... cap. That's cap. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, cap. yeah. It's like I don't know what I was talking about. Like, you know. Look, we know we know <laughs> what Disney and Marvel said to you. Okay, you keep your mouth shut, all right, and it'll be a big surprise. But the internet knows. Yeah. Well, even there was things out today where they were talking about the uh there was two different leaks for the uh the 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 names for for the third one and it was one was Phone Home and the other one was like Home Wrecker. Uh and uh, but they were they were leaked by I think the guy who plays Ned and by uh Tom Holland. Uh but no, I think he is. I, yeah, I he think he can't it, keep his mouth But shut. but I think he it was just... a troll though. I don't think it was a real everybody know he's synonymous with he can't shut the hell up. So I think it was a troll like the studio or whoever was was uh, heading over him was like, yeah, we everybody knows you can't shut up. So go ahead and put this out. And then Ned or guy plays Ned. Uh, you go ahead and put it out, too. So that way we can have this like weird little fun guessing game. As far yeah. as you know, what the name? I don't think it's either one of those. I honestly think it's homesick. I don't know what it is, I, but I don't think it's. I don't think it's that. I don't. I mean the the oh. the code of, the code name is Serenity now, and now yeah, I, I know code names don't really necessarily mean what they say, but. Yeah. Well, I know I this one isn't being filmed in Europe this time. No, this one this one's filmed. Uh, this, this one takes place in the states. Yeah. I, I know that for sure because yeah. my my connections at Pinewood in the UK. I know that mm -hmm. they're not working on anything. Right. Uh, anything. Well, I don't think they're working on anything Marvel right now. I know they've got Star Wars stuff that they're doing. Yeah, uh, and they've got James Bond stuff that they've um, that they're that Ooh. they finished. I think that they finished. I think they finished the James because there was a bunch of pickups that they did after. So you know how the movie was supposed to come out last year? Mm. Well, they did a bunch of pickups after that. Um, Wasn't Daniel Craig is playing? He's still playing Double O, right? He's still playing. This Bond. is a lot. Yeah, this is his last one. He said it, it was a Spectre. No, no, this, this was the last, last one. one. <laughs> no, yeah, no, this is his last one. This is 100 okay. percent Daniel Craig's last one. Okay. Because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they've already got there. We can talk about this in a future podcast of who we want to see as the next James Bond. I have an idea in mind um, who I'd like to see as James Bond. Um, they're they're also recasting Doctor Who as well. She uh, the the female that's currently Doctor Who right. quit. She quit. She, okay, I'm not yeah, familiar so, with Doctor Who. I've never really watched it, but I know there's a shit ton of them. I know Martin yeah. was it and Michael Sheen. He played. No, he did. He play no. He didn't play no, no. Doctor Who at one point. Is the guy who was uh, Barty Crouch Jr. He played him at one point. David Tennant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he he's him. he's my favorite Doctor Who. Yeah, he's, he's my that. favorite. I, I know there's so many seasons of of Doctor Who. I'm just kind of lost at this oh, point. Oh, there's a lot. The show's been going for Christ knows how long. Yeah, it's, it's almost as old as James Bond. Hey, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not hopping into that. That's that's yeah yeah I'm good, but yeah I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean no, right, so so Trilith has three movies as of right now that we know that are that are filming. Uh, so Black Adam yeah, which you know the Rock Spider Man, Spider -Man. three and I don't know what the third one is. 
Well, all right. So, in my... oh, it would ha- it would have to be one of the Walking Dead movies, right? No, they're not doing that at that. They have their own separate studio. Oh, they have their own. Really? Yeah. All right. So they have uh, Star Wars films. They have a studio out in Sonoy. Ah. Oh, yeah. They have right, they have okay. a studio. They have their own studio out there, which. Uh, don't well, get. Uh, we're, only... we're gonna talk about Walking Dead here after a little bit after we run through a yeah. couple of uh of shenanigans. Well, the only other thing that I can think of it being, because it's it's all the big like big head studio stuff, right? There's no small time kind of. No, know, I mean you... they they probably have a couple of, of little. Uh, I mean they do, but as far as like the the big studios, the big like the big actual like buildings. Uh, yeah were they sound stages yeah sure Why yeah not? uh those are those are uh well the only other thing i could think of is in those are five. Well, i can that's, see that that's the only other thing i can think of is yeah because that started production right or is it in still in pre-production i can't remember i never did get to ask it what the third film was so i'm kind of bummed out on that one but uh well, we can talk about it next week. You can yeah. find out when we talk about it next week. Yeah, I got it. Um, yeah. All right, so the second... Where are we? Right, one right. division. Let's, let's, let's talk about what we think is going to happen in the last episode. <clears throat> because when we left off in the, at the end, the finally, an end credit scene, God forbid that they don't... <laughs> we finally got one. What? All right. There is an end credit scene yeah, cause Maria, in the last episode. Yeah, Maria showed up. Right. Or Maria Monica, showed up, Monica. and then... Uh, Pietro kind of just showed up out of the blue over her shoulder, and I was wondering where he was because he wasn't in the entire right. episode. And then he right. just showed up over her shoulder. What was he eating, by the way? I don't know. Was he was he eating a Twinkie? He might have been. I don't know what he was eating, but yeah, so he basically showed up. So this is going to be kind of like a... But he showed up as like kind of like a villain, basically kind of like, oh, you're snooping around. So I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like, when you go back and look at it, it's like it's almost like he was told he was kind of like programmed to do that but we know he's like a real person because agatha can't create people she's only yeah. a witch so she, she can only yeah she yeah she can like manipulate yeah like what what you know, that uh, sort of thing what wanda did in the you know age of ultron she can only like manipulate their thoughts and and yeah. for them to do stuff but she can't actually create wanda but i i think that deals with the fact of like that's probably what she wants is she wants her powers uh, because like them talking about the Nexus, like in Marvel comics, she's kind of like a Nexus for, you know, chaos magic and, and, and but for like the multiverse. So, you know, Agatha, she can't also, she can't create powers, right? Uh, no, she deals with magic, so she can't really like right. create anything. This is one of the things of that I was thinking of is he would already have to have those powers, right? So is this the Quicksilver from Whoa. X-Men? No, I'm, I don't know. That's a good question. Well, she could probably make him do, like, if she has magic, she could probably, she, that's probably in, within her wheelhouse to, to make somebody, you know, be fast. No, but I d- I, yeah, but I don't think she can give powers. So I'm, he, he's probably already a mutant that she's like mind manipulated, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Or he's a regular person. Yeah, that she turned in like by him passing through it, it unlocked his X gene. Uh, because I mean that's that's where we're going off right now is like all the st- like that hex is basically uh, burst out of like the the dawn of the universe, like the Big Bang, mm-hmm. and that's where the Infinity Stones came from. So like you know she's giving off that kind of aura, and you know we saw what happened to Monica where she actually you know turned into Photon where she got her powers. You know, I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, some people, that's how they unlock their, their X gene in a sense. Maybe she's going to yeah. push the hex out to the whole world and create mutants. Uh, maybe that's how that's going to end. I don't know. Maybe, maybe dipshit's going to like fire off a missile and she's basically going to absorb the whole world. I, I don't know. It's, I, I mean, it's interesting to say the least it is interesting it is it is interesting i i think in this next episode what we're going to see is uh we're definitely going to see a big character i'm yeah. i'm almost convinced that we're going to see a big character and it leads me on to this it was announced this week in a rumor but as we've seen with these rumors 
when there's a it's a casting rumor, it's normally true, right? Because it, it always comes down from the top. Yeah. When these big leaks come out, it always comes down from the top. So the rumor this week is that Jennifer Lawrence is going to be staying in the uh, the Marvel Universe and she's going to yeah. be playing Sue Storm. And I I don't have any problems with this. I don't. I actually don't. I don't have any problems with this. Me and you spoke about the the perfect Sue Storm would be um, <clears throat> Emily Blunt, and then yeah. John Krasinski is uh, yeah. As but as we Mr. know, Fantastic. Like, generally Marvel or Disney and everybody, they all it's kind of like a group of friends. So like anything that happens, um, you know, any any movie that happens, usually you'll see like one or two people they will go out and do a movie together so like maybe yep. uh maybe because she you know still wanted a job and i think she got a bad rep i mean i, I don't give her bad press for what happened in the in the the fox x-men i i think they focus too much on mystique when the story wasn't about mystique so mm-hmm. i think I, but i mean i could get Just behind say- like sitting there for like what 12 hours going through these prosthetics and this makeup and stuff like that just to do like what three four scenes or something like that or you know that, maybe that's why, two that's hours that's why i feel for that's why i feel for uh, <clears throat> Bat- for batista oh yeah because yeah he has to sit there for so long yeah because it's and like drax is very uh intricate in details yeah yeah but even even with nebula right it's only a head and maybe yeah. her arms. Yeah. With Drax, it's his full, it's his full upper, you know, it's Batista's full upper torso. And that's a that's a lot of man right there. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. That's a, that's a lot of man right there. So. Yeah. So I, I can get, I, I can understand. And then it was in the last movie, they basically just like gave her, they like superimposed or like, get, like brought her saturation down or up uh, on her face and gave her a couple of like little tiny mole things and that was it. So they basically, she had the same skin tone, but they yeah. just changed the skin tone to make it look. And I think they put like a well, noise filter I, on it, maybe to make it look a little bit more raised, but it, it was definitely like, she wasn't wearing it was like any, yeah, yeah, she wasn't, if anything, they basically just spray paint. She was, her. she was, That's it. <laughs> she, no, she was wearing a, she was wearing a suit. Um, so I, I know exactly. So the only thing that they did in terms of, uh, in terms of prosthetic was her face and, they would do a hair and then everything else was a, was a suit. And then they would, it was like a, it was like a, um, CG thing in post. What do you mean? So in dark Phoenix, are you talking about that one? Yeah. Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Because she looked normal. The scenes. Hmm? She looked normal. Like she didn't even look like she had any prosthetics on apart from like her hair. And then the, those little things on her forehead, but outside yeah, of that, that's it looked what like I'm they saying. just changed. They only the... did her her face and uh, like her head. That was it because everything else was a suit. Because when yeah. the majority of the scenes you see her in, you don't actually see her as Mystique. You see her as Raven. Yeah, yeah. And then of and then obviously, spoiler alert: she dies. Yeah, I think I think she got a little. I wouldn't say she got diva like like diva ish. In the, in the sense that like maybe like no she was she was busy filming something else yeah and a lot of people and she like i said sitting there for how many hours it was like, and, and stuff you know like how that. you know in, how in hollywood where if you get a part and then like that part takes like uh precipice over of, over another part you have yeah, like scheduling conflicts first. and whatnot mm-hmm. like with like with what pedro pascal's got right now so he's obviously he's in the mandalorian he is right he is the the face of the show right like, well, but, I, really, but, <laughs> after the last episode, yeah. Yeah, but because of, you know, because of how, you know, it only needs to be his voice, he has a limited production time. He doesn't need to be in the suit, basically. Right, right, right. So, he's in The Last of Us. I, I know you've seen that casting. No, I didn't. He was cast in The Last of Us. Who's he playing? He's playing Joel, is he? Yeah. He's playing Joel? Yeah. Yeah, Pedro Pascal was cast as Joel, and then the uh, the okay. girl from Game of Thrones was cast as wait whatever whatever her name is the the, the girl from Game of Thrones. What's her name? Which um, one? The one who played uh, Liana Mormont. Wait, Little Bear? Yeah. 
She was called okay. Sally, yeah. What the? <clears throat> what? Oh, well, okay, so Elliot Page, is, I guess she doesn't want to play the, the role that she played in the actual game, so I, I guess. I of course mean, she doesn't. Yeah. So, he I mean, doesn't. Sorry. They. I of course know. he doesn't. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm trying to um, be friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh. But, so. All right. So wait, we went yeah. on a tangent, Cal. Yeah, I know we're twenty five. We're twenty five in. Those we're, we're 25 in. So let's let's all talk right, about let's, the let's second get on one. To, uh, CDL. Let's get onto the CDL. Yeah. Let's okay, get on the CDL. So we've had, okay. We've had five matches so far this week. All right. So. We've Two yesterday, three today. I'm I'm slacking a little bit. I did watch the phase match, and I thought it. W okay, so I thought we were gonna be a little bit more. I think it's gonna be harder because, I mean, technically they're they're second in their pool, right? So they're second in their their pool. I was like, okay, they're gonna give us a little bit of tough time. And second, no. second, third, yeah. No, they're se they're second below. Uh, uh, not anymore. They're not. Well, no, 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 no. Two. Yeah, yeah, because they, they they lost to us. Or, or they're fourth me. now. Well, take a third, and Paris are uh, second. All right. So who who else played besides besides them? I'm slacking. Paris second. Wait, was that Paris's first win? I can't even remember. I think Paris got their first win because I think they lost to LAG, right? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they LAG. lost. Yeah, they lost to LAG in a game five. Yeah, I mean um, uh, the ranking, how it was going, it was. So they're one and they're one and two. Uh, Ultra are one and two, right? Wait, I'm just I'm th I'm thinking. Yeah, Ultra are one and two. Uh, or two. And, I can't eat Cal. I'm I'm lost. I think Ultra are one and two. Optic yeah. are one and one, and Atlanta are three and zero. Oh. All right. So Optic play Ultra <laughs> tomorrow. Right. Um, and then they play LAG on Thursday, and then Mutineers on Sunday. And Mutineers don't look good, by the way. No, so I, I don't know if you've seen what happened today, but they they came out and they was it today or yesterday? No, it was today. Right, oh, yeah, it was today. They, 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 have they came out and they team. got hot three would by Paris today. Well, who's on Paris? Uh, Fire Scraps Classic and Aqua. Okay, so you have Aqua and Scraps, which are I wouldn't say. I mean, they're kind of veterans. So I mean, not, maybe not Aqua, but classic. No, Aqua, Aqua is definitely a veteran. I guess okay. Um, yeah, and then you've got Classic, who is like he's been playing since Black Ops Two. But then you got the Mutineers, which the Mutineers is like you have uh, no veterans on that team apart from Josiah. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, Josiah, he's he's been around the scene for a hot minute. You've got. <clears throat> you've got the newest newbie in Neptune, and then Which... you've got uh, Awakening, who came onto the scene last year, and then mm -hmm. Skies, who Skies came onto the scene. Two... Skies came onto the scene in Black Ops 4. Yeah, about two years ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he'd been around, but not, not like, you know, pro. Not, yeah, not like. Yeah. Um, he's been around. He's been. A, I've known of the name Skies since about Black Ops 3 when he used to play with Courage. Right, right. Um. But yeah, he he became pro in in Black Ops Four. I'm yeah, sure. the only person you have on that team that is actually like you know basically saying, "Hey, this is what needs to happen," uh, is uh, Slack. Jerry, I mean, yeah, yeah it's Jerry. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see, but Jerry's not like <clears throat> he's not generally a leader. He's kind of like a do it all man. Well, I think I think that veteran, you know, being a veteran, I think leadership comes with that, right? Because you pick up, and especially with the teammates that he's had over the years, you pick up a lot of those traits that other players have. Um, you know, you look at guys like, you know, he seemed a formal, gunless John, um, Octane, Looney, Aqua. Yeah, but uh, there's certain people that have a commanding presence, like as far as, you know, telling people what to do versus people well, that I, are I, kind of like... I, like I've always thought of like Slack as basically being like the kind of like the uh, the do it all type person where people would generally tell him like Hey, go over here and do that, and he's like, All right, bet, run it. Like <laughs> I think that changes. I think that changes though when you get older, right? Because yeah. you know we've seen players that have been leaders for their whole career, like you know your slashes and your crim sixes, mm -hmm. and obviously crim learned from one of the best. Yeah. Um, 
and then obviously you know in, in learning that right you have a guy like clay who who also picked up that leadership from those two and then took it on throughout his career um <clears throat> no i i believe that you know jerry being the leader of this team actually suits them because they definitely needed one mm -hmm. um i just i don't think this team is suited for 4v4 I, I don't think that, you know, that switch, they've only... So there's two players on the team that have only played 5v5, five and, five and you've right. got, you know, Awakening, you know, as far as I can tell, the, the guy just, you know, he's frying, right? He's got a 2.4 KD in S&D right. overall, um, and nobody else on his team seems to be able to help him. Well, no, Neptune's got Nep doing all right. He's he's trying, well, yeah, but he, it's but he came he came over from Halo, right? So he's not going to find that consistency straight away. Yeah, he's but he's not going to be able to find those consistent performances like game yeah. in and game out. Whereas you have a guy, you know, like Skies, for example, last year he was so consistent with the AR, and then <clears throat> for some reason <clears throat> this year he he hasn't been uh he hasn't been as consistent as he was last year, and I I don't know what it could be. I mean. You know, maybe he's not playing the game as much as as he was last year, but I yeah. don't think it will stay the same for this Mutineers team. I I think they're going to lose to Optic on Sunday. I'm almost convinced of it. I mean, I could eat my own words, and they could, you know, come out firing on all cylinders. But I mean, if they if they, know, they get they, another veteran on their team, they'd have to like either trade or they'd have. I mean, because they can't they can't get rid of somebody. They, no, I, I mean, they can't get rid of like. But, what I was going to say is, I feel like the pickup of Neptune maybe was a bit too early. Because I know he's good. I know he's good. Right. But you have a guy like Havoc sitting on the bench. And, you know, how annoying he can be in 5v5, he would be even more annoying in 4v4. Yeah. There's less for him to worry about on the map. But I, I think they're... <laughs> Yeah, but I think they, they dug their heel in so much when it came to, like, everybody talking about, you know, talking shit about how Neptune came over uh, from the Halo scene. Granted, it's 4v4, yeah, cool, but he came over from the 4v4, uh, the Halo scene and basically took a spot that maybe Doug could have gotten or Aix could have gotten. You know, somebody that wasn't necessarily retired uh, yeah, and but was just playing double way dutch. Past or I even, mean, all right, I've, I've seen even uh, Parasite. I mean, again, right? Again in the league today, Haggy showed why he shouldn't be in there. He didn't perform, right? He's had an, an extra week now of practice, right? And he performed worse in, in these matches than he did in his last ones. They came out and they got smoked by subliners. It's the quickest three I've seen since the... Uh... Wait, so who's he playing, though? Who's he? What team is he playing? Haggy? He's playing yeah. for the Royal Ravens. Oh, really? Yeah. So, Zero's was... still got visa issues. Right, so Haggy signed a contract, and I think he's going to have to sign an extension on his contract because I still think Zero is having problems, and this is before the major that's coming up. Right, <clears throat> but yeah, they I mean, so we had a hard point against um, Subliners, wasn't close. <clears throat> then we had a uh, an S and D that was a six one, and then the control was a straight three zero. And Haggy was the only one in the control that was positive. Everybody else got shit on. Yeah. And I mean, like, bad. Like, triple negative. So was Haggy the only person on the team that was actually doing <laughs> anything? Or who who's on the Ra Ravens again? Besides Zero? Shawnee, Alex, and Dylan. Okay, and, Dylan's and okay. Alex is he's all right. This is, this is what was going to bring my point around, is that on the word of a guy who was doing anything to stay in the league, that being Shawnee, and then Adam Assault, who, you know, was baiting his teammate and you to VOD, he was baiting his teammates at chance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like you you know for sure that he was doing it, right? Just to play for stats. Yeah. Because the he was trying to like, Yeah, but they were talking were about that. They were talking about that last year. They were talking about like <clears throat> people just individually trying to do good. Even though they knew they weren't gonna be able to do shit, they were trying to do good so well, that they could pad their stats cer for next season. Certain teams certain teams knew that it was going back to four v four. They yeah. were playing for stats. Yeah. Right? As a team that finished fourth at yeah. champs, I can tell you that London the scraps and fucking Moskin, they weren't playing for stats. Right, they weren't. They weren't playing for one of them's not in the league, and he had no. the best stats on his team. No, they were. They were doing what they were. What they normally do. It was like you know, yeah. same old, same old. They were playing and, to win, and they right? got and shit they on. lost. They lost to a better team. They lost to the Huntsman, 
right? Yeah. After make the no, they they made it through a grueling bracket as well, mm -hmm. and they they lost to the Huntsman, right? Which I don't like. That face Dallas, system anyways. face Dallas Huntsman were always going to be top three because mutineers they, and rest in peace to Pharaoh. You are sorely missed in this community. You, you know how that saying, Cal, where you you never realize how much you like miss someone until they're gone. I didn't realize what sort of impact the guy had on the community until he he was gone. Yeah. Right. It was like when you show up the games and you see his passion. Well, yeah, because he didn't know gone. that he didn't know whether he was like he didn't care whether he was gonna like be on a team. He was just like, "Hey, y'all need me? Run it! Like we're gonna do this shit, whether y'all whether I'm gonna be on this team or not." Because even when he was playing for you know like he was playing for uh uh priesta he was playing for him because priesta was sick and he was just like hey i'm probably not going to be starting on this team but you know my boys need me so go ahead and run it and they what did they do they won right yeah they won that suit that won yeah. the series and then lost the next one but yeah, yeah they, so did, like, they did they did win the pharaoh on the team yeah so i mean it's you know and he's always <clears> kind <throat> of been that way but it's, it, it, it's like it's one of those things where i feel sorry for the mutineers because they're stuck in this kind of situation the hell they're stuck in this uh situation where um the you know they pharaoh he's kind of left a gap right right you've got awakening right who continues to prove why he's good at the game and then <clears throat> you you lost pharaoh and and then you've got skies and and uh skies and josiah and you know I can't blame Jerry because of his role, but like, you know, Skies has to be performing better in his main AR role. Yeah. Because you look at most of the other main ARs in the league, right? You've got Krim, <clears throat> Clay, yeah, um, trying to think, Arsites, Formal, Formal, who, by the way, is in the top 10 for overall KD. I just want to, you know, Dashy, well, I mean, Dashy, because uh, it's obviously a 2 AR matter, I mean, you've got Dashy in there as well. Like, all of these guys are performing for their team and then the subs are doing what they need to do. But it's like with the subs on the mutineers, the subs are doing what they need to do, but their performances are getting kind of, <clears throat> they get, oh, I say shaded because their ARs or one of their ARs isn't performing how he should be. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have an AR that basically isn't able to get in, you know, they get those spots as kind of like uh when you play i guess the reason why like my two hit most hated maps ever as of right now has to be miami and satellite i hate satellite i think it's like one of the worst designed maps partially because if you have an ar you're king like you don't need a and it's so hard for a sub to and that's my role it's so hard to like push around the map knowing that an AR that's out in the dunes or sitting back can literally just pick you off. Uh, so, I mean, and if your ARs aren't doing what they're supposed to do, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the game shot. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that they don't, I think they did have satellite in there at one point. Then they took that shit out real quick. Cause the, the pros were like, eh. <clears throat> nah, they never played it. Oh, they, they never, never played it once. No, oh, I thought they were talking about whether it was going to be. Nah. Them. They so one out. of the maps that was in at the start of the game was Miami. The pros never played it. The other one was the one with the bushes. Uh, oh, cartel. Cartel. Yeah. Yeah. And that was yeah. in the pro rotation. But it was cheap. It's pros, too cheeky. It's no, but the pros, they did. Yeah. They didn't scream it. Play it. I think Seattle maybe <laughs> played it one time. Maybe, they, I mean, but he, optic, optic didn't play it once. No, because they, they already like, knew what we, it was. Like, we, like, we ain't screaming this. that shit. That <laughs> map is ass. Yeah, right? I don't gonna... mind it. It's just not a. It's not a map you think about when you go into like, like, uh, like competitive. It's not one of the, because because of the bushes and and the weird look of the map. Like all, like Call of Duty is generally traditional with the with the style. So when you come out with a map that has like this big open middle uh it's it's just a little weird uh and there's mm -hmm. like big ass bushes that and i i'm pretty sure everybody was in agreement that they needed to like at least cut the bushes down just a little bit um but yeah as i've gotten as i've played it more <clears throat> i don't mind it but it's it's still a little weird um, i i think the map rotation we have now is okay like we have raid in there and i mean who doesn't like raid I mean, I, let's be honest. I can't wait for them to bring in, uh, and I don't know if they're going to do this at all, but I think <laughs> they need to bring in Express. 
which Charlie Intel said Express and Miami were, they had a tier list of the, you know, worst, the little tier list thing. And they were like, oh, the, the two like absolute filth maps are, uh, uh, Miami and uh, Express. And I'm like, wh- who wrote that? Like, who published that? And who I mean, who oversaw the any, publishing of that? I don't have any quarrels with Miami because I think it's the best S&D map on the game in terms of, like, brand new maps we have. And you may be confused as to why I'm saying this, Cal, but I, think I played Mar- a lot Moscow. of Miami S&D. It's really, for me, it's the <clears throat> it's one of the only ones that plays in a sense like a traditional S and D map would play, right? Because yeah. you have you know Moscow. <clears throat> well, you uh, Moscow. I don't mind Moscow either, but yeah. <clears throat> you have checkmate. So open. Yeah. You no, know, and you it's and weird. one of the bomb sites is in the fucking plane. And it's just yeah. And the other one, it's like you can watch both plant, bomb sites. Your only plant spot is can be seen from you know pretty much anywhere on that side like there's yeah. no cover to plant the bomb yeah um <clears throat> so i don't like garrison is heavily favored towards the defensive side because of where both the bomb sites are placed oh yeah you have to go through basically everything but, to get to them but miami <clears throat> you know if you get purple control or if you get garage control you're right. good for b and then if you get beach control or if you have mid control you're good to plant a Right, and that's why I like the map because it, it it doesn't favor one side. It favors like okay, you need to get control of a certain point on the map to win rounds, and I think that's one of the things you know that kind of has been missed this year in in Trout's game because they had so right. little time. I you know obviously with the setback of Sidechammer and then uh, COVID hitting as well, like I can't even believe that Trout got a game out to us in the first place. Well, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily their game though. It was uh, Sledgehammer's game originally. Well, well, they no, did. this is this is the thing, right? Like Sledgehammer never even got this far. No, they no, never even, uh, they had they the had base an, game. All they had was an idea. All they had was an idea. They had an idea. They didn't they didn't work on it at all. And then they just no, reported they, it. In no. There. So what happened was they had an idea, right? And then right. during during Black Ops Four was when you know, you remember how we were getting like loads of content for Black Ops Four and then it just stopped. Do you remember? I mean, yeah, I, I don't really remember. So, a and lot then of and then basically after Warzone, that we were just or... getting like the basics for the game. Like that's all we were getting, right? We were getting camos and new stuff in, in supply drops. Basically, keep feeding them money and then. Yeah, but blackout I think that, I thought get... that. Yeah, I was about to say I thought that had something to do with like blackout getting everything because blackout they they no, did like no, the no. heroes so, thing and yeah. So what ha- This is what happened, right? So in Black Ops Four, <clears throat> Sledgehammer messed up. Activision didn't like it. Told Treyarch that they were working on the game after the next one, right? So after Modern Warfare, it was going to be another Treyarch title. So obviously, they're going to put all their attention into what's making the most money and being played the most. Mm-hmm. And then the other stuff is going to be like, well, we'll fix stuff here and there. We'll help the pros out. But as far as this game goes, it's it's not going to change a whole lot from now until the end of the game. Right. right? So, you know, they're, they're giving us, you know, like basically stuff to make Activision money um, for the rest of the game. Whilst Treyarch are now working on this brand new idea, which their idea was, OK, you wanted a game based on Vietnam. So what we'll do is we'll do a direct sequel and we'll base it on the Cold War, the right. direct sequel to Black Ops 1. Right. And so with that, you know, they, they start working on the game, right? They have a year and a half to work on the game, you know, COVID-free, and then, bam, COVID hits. And bearing in mind that a studio at this point had already probably would have already had two and a half years to work on the game, and they'd be putting the finishing touches on. Treyarch are working through the most stressful period of time in a game's life cycle in covid so they're not doing it in a studio. They're all doing it from home. Dave Vonderhaar's probably aged about 20 years in five months because have well, you seen I, how gray his beard is? Yeah, I get that. But there's like certain things that they did and, and there's cert- there, there's exact <clears throat> like sequel shit that they did from Black Ops 4 to this game that, you know, 
it's not i wouldn't say it's because they did the same thing in black ops 4 and there was an excuse of like covid that they did exactly in this game too um prioritize, what do you mean well one prioritizing the br that's and i know that's an activision thing because well, no, they, but the, they're they not that. prioritizing they're not prioritizing br this year though yeah, yeah. Well, a, no, they're no, not. No, 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 they're they're not, not Activision is, but Activision well, no, is a publisher. Even, I wouldn't even say that Activision are prioritizing BR, right? Because as far as Cold War goes, no, 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 no. no. Come on, now. I wouldn't even say that they're prioritizing BR, right? So you, you look <laughs> at you look at Warzone, right? It's its own separate entity now. It has an entire studio by itself working on Warzone. That's right. Raven, right? Yeah. Raven deals with that, right? And then you have Treyarch who are working on Cold War. Right, right. I I did want to touch on league play for a second. So league play, <clears throat> league play is a copy and paste in Black Ops Four. Oh yeah, straight, and it's it's straight trash. copy and paste. It's trash. Straight copy and paste, it. and I I wanted to throw this out here to you to see what you thought. So, so back in November when you know Seth sent out all those tweets and he was pissed off that there wasn't a ranked play. Right, right? and then, and then, then everybody else out. started hopping on Treyarch's ass like. You and guys got a, and Von Har basically out. like told him, "Yo, chill." I think he did he's like, "Yo, chill. We like we have the right. We have people working on it." What yeah. do you think happened? Because I think I know what happened. So I think they started working on something. They panicked. Realized, that's that's think, exactly what happened. Well, no, I no no. no. Treyarch were always going to give us a league play, but I think they realized when they started working on it, they were like, "Ah, oh, shit. If we start working on this now, it's going to take us four months to build it, and then we got to get it in the game." But it's, it doesn't right. take that long. It it really doesn't take that long. I mean, yeah, they they can in, they no, can port you... an algorithm, and they were even talking about it in the in the Optic podcast where Hex was basically saying like all these. It's are, not um, that simple. I, it's okay. not as simple as importing an algorithm from another game. It's the code. It all it's code. Like he said, yeah, he I, doesn't I know, understand it, know, but it's code. It's, so yeah, like all at you need the end to of do. The day, it's all code, right? But yeah. like, right? So. Everybody was, you know, everybody was telling Treyarch, hey, give us something like World War Two, you know, give us more ranks or more stuff to achieve, right? Yeah. We want this to be competitive. You look at every other big esport game, League of Legends, CSGO, they all have a great ranking system, yeah. and it's also really hard. With COD, because it's a yearly cycle, right, my thing has always been, Keep the same fucking ranking system every single year. Just fucking start the World War Two one off like right now, and then keep the same ranking system every year, and then just you know it will just have new maps, right? Because that's all you gotta do. Well, no, no, the, but I don't. All right, so I get that, but at the same time, you can import the the, the basic algorithm of the ranking system in there like a, a skill-based matchmaking no matter what you go to it's going to basically be the same like the algorithm of score per minute uh and they now have damage in there so score per minute damage and then whether you win or lose uh so because mm -hmm. i believe that's what the black ops 4 aka the wars uh the the cold war one goes off of whether you win or lose in your score per minute so if you <laughs> if you put that algorithm into every single game from here until whatever it'll be the same the problem that I have is like literally I, I feel like when all that shit came out, they didn't have uh league play at all put up because they were focusing on uh what they how they were gonna... the most popular. Well right, but they were also inputting trying to figure out how they were gonna input Which is cap, by the way. What? Absolutely cap. What? Black Ops Four is not the most popular iteration of league play. No. That's fucking cap. It's two. Black Ops Two is definitely the most popu yeah. popular iteration of League Play we've they were ever gonna had. They're going to build off of the the success. That, was they that, that, that what they said that we're going to build off the success of Black Ops 4's League Play? And I'm like, success of yeah, what? Because it Didn't was nobody the understand most it. popular. But no, I guarantee you, right? So Activision, like, you guys got to get that shit out right now. The CDL starting. Like, if it's not in there when the CDL starts, people are going to get pissed. Yeah, you had right? two so different. They were just like. Yeah. They probably panicked and just like, you know what, just copy and paste the last one. It's probably the easiest one to code into the game. Yeah, the only difference is you didn't have the you didn't have the the you know the background of where your players stood. Uh like you did in the black you know, the like with the lights and the blue, whatever. They didn't have that yeah. shit. But it literally the same the same thing. Like they have a rank and they have a skill. Like your rank is Hey, how sweaty are you at playing the game? And then the other one is how sweaty are you on the sticks? So like <laughs> it's basically the same shit. It's like 
I yeah. play this game a lot and I'm really good at this game or I don't play this game a lot and I'm going to stay in bronze forever and I'm also a competitor which for the first what two days they had like it was the the within the top 50 and then they changed it the next I, I think it was the next day they changed it to where the bottom 50 was competitor uh cuz I remember the first day it was like the the uh um master was like the top uh three to or yeah, it's three to five or something like that. And then it went down like that. And then you look at the next day and it was like the top 2%. And it's like, oh, okay. But they basically like, you know, put you in like uh, advanced division. You're like, that's a little weird. And then you go and play the the next placement. And you're like, oh, you're an elite. And it's like, all right, cool. That that makes well, a little bit more put sense. In, it put me in elite. I was like, okay. Well, the first time it put me in, uh, it put me in advanced. And I'm like, and he, but it put. Put me in competitor. Right. But it put fork. And it put, uh, well, yeah, it put Fork, uh, but it put also put Jeff, uh, and uh, Elliot all in the same division. It put all three of them in competitor, and I'm sitting here in advance, and I'm like, now I can flex and say I'm better than Fork, but I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not partially because he's on PC mouse keyboard, uh, but also partially because yeah, he's younger than me, so he's got a little bit, you know, he's got a little bit better response time. So I'll give him that, but. To put them in competitor, nah. But you think Fork's better than you? Yeah, I can say that. Yeah, he is. He's he's younger, it, but his problem is uh, Fork's main problem is he wants to chill back. He wants he's to play. the slowest player I've ever played in my life. But he's the slowest player because he wants to chill and he wants to get kills. He wants to pad his stats and we've me and him have went at this at length because when he gets on a sub, even when he was on controller, because now he's on full mouse and keyboard, when he's on when he was on Why is control, he on full mouse and keyboard? Because he just got rid of all of it and he's actually pretty decent on mouse and keyboard now. Uh he, he's actually pretty easy. He's actually a lot better than he was on mouse uh, on a uh, controller. Um, both him and Jeff are on mouse and keyboard all uh, full out. Um, oh, yeah. Which I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be able to do that because you know arthritis, diabetes. But uh, actually, so like, no. Yeah. You get arthritis more from playing controller than you would uh, no it's 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 the way that you move your fingers and stuff like that Ah, i've watched it i've watched him the way he moves his fingers like that would mess me up i'm just sitting there like "Eh, yeah i can't i tried it once i can't remember what game i was playing but i tried it but let's let's bring it back around to the cdl before we go off on another yeah we've already went on a tangent and we're almost at an hour in we still got two subjects left to go so yeah so before i just wanted to close out by saying obviously a plane tomorrow they have a big game against Toronto and then they play LAG and then Florida the rest of this week. And if they, they win all three of their games, they'll be in second and they'll be good. And they'll yeah. be good for the major. Because as Just, of right now, Dallas has a stain on their name, AKA called a loss. And I said this last fucking season that the only reason why they won is because they were in Dallas and they had two servers, two yeah, they might have done okay. I'm I'm gonna stick by my statement. If if they had bubbled for for a land last oh, yeah. year, right? Huntsman would have won. Oh, Huntsman would have won. Cap. They they wouldn't even have, like they did okay at the beginning of the season at the when it when it was land. They did okay, but it wasn't until they actually went online that they act. Would they win it? They win it. They won at L.A. But who wasn't there? Dallas. Yeah, who wasn't there? Huntsman. Huntsman and face with that. You, you lost to the rocker in the semifinals. Oh yeah, we did. Okay. Even then we didn't play them. That was a, that was a crazy series. Yeah, it was. And then Uh, then the Dallas Dallas and rocker series was crazy. I think rocker just burnt out in that S and D. Yeah. Cause they literally went up against us and they pulled out all their stops. Like God, our was sweating his dick off trying to beat us. And he did a damn good job. He shut us down every chance he got. So I give him props for them, for them shutting him down. He was definitely the all-star of that game. I remember his name on that shit kind of hurt my feelings. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they won that. And then what happened after that? We went online and then they were like, they were the shit. They, they were well, straight you, to shit. You and you and Dallas were the, with the definite, definite Kings of online. But yes. we weren't the, just the Kings well, of online. Cause actually, we, no, we smacked this. That. The we smacked this. Probably the, 
Yeah, well, the, the king Mutineers and Dallas were probably the kings of online. But you, the, at least the Mutineers didn't become like really the shit until Waking and got on there. Yeah, and it went online as well, right? They didn't win anything on LAN. Um, they well, they got in the semi They got in the uh, grand finals with us at Atlanta. Yeah, and they got smacked three zero. Wasn't even exactly. Close. That's what I'm saying. So you got like Awakening, in which he's an all mind star, whatever, and he's you know whatever. I, I have my own feelings towards him, but then so you have them going on there, and then you have <laughs> Dallas, and Dallas is sitting there, like even like everybody's saying that there's two servers. So if they have a server veto, and somebody's in LA, and there's only one server in LA, they're automatically going to get host because it's in Dallas. It's right down the road from him. So, like, it, come on. Yeah, which is why Formal said he heavily regrets not moving to Texas right. at the end of last year. And now look at them. Everybody, with the exception of a few people or teams, like, everybody's in Dallas. And look what's happening. And you can't tell me it's because it's a different game and got shit to do with that. Well, mm -hmm. you you could say it is 4v4, right? But I, I don't think that's the case. Oh, at I, don't, all. I don't think so. that's the thing. Like, Krim is basically letting everybody run around. He's literally well, letting them run around. Here's the thing, right? 4v4, you have to be smarter. Yeah. Right? And here, here's, the, here's the problem. You're playing against uh, a two minds in, in S&D, right? The, literally like when it comes to 4v4 s and d major maniac ran the 4v4 s and d scene for years yeah he him simp illy dashy all of those guys they ran it right yeah they were untouchable mm -hmm. and then you have accuracy and in world war Two, like he ran he basically ran that game he, he ran was, the fn he was, or the he was top. <laughs> yeah but like <laughs> In terms of S and D, like there weren't many teams that were better than TK, if no. any teams that were better than TK in S and D, right? Yeah. Only at the end of the game, when you have a guy like Bevels who came from an S and D background was coaching right. EG, right? And you know they they were really good at S and D. Like they right. went from being like what was it, Owen eighteen in the game mode to winning right. all of their pretty much all of their S and Ds at champs. I think right. they lost like two, right? Which is ridiculous. All right. Like, All right. We need to... We need to... Right, we're we're, we're almost year, at an hour. This year, Chance <laughs> is going to be on land. Oh, right? yeah. If Krim wins number four, I have nothing to say. Right? I, I will not have anything to say. If he doesn't win number four, right? And fucking... I'll be like, right, well, last year, you fucking, your little rubber ring that you're wearing on your finger, yeah. that was fucking bullshit. Well, because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if he wins a fourth ring, okay, I get it. Because everybody was basically there, so there's not a lot of excuses as far as, like, connection issues. But if he doesn't, which there's still, like, Well, no, this year's on land. Oh, the, yeah, the majors are on land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the majors, the just champs. The majors are online. I thought the majors were land. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna check on that one because I'm pretty sure I don't doing, think so. That's why they're doing these like super shits, is because they were talking about the majors were gonna be on lands. But I don't know. Either don't know. either, either way, so. uh, either way, if he wins in this one, I'll give him props. But as far as as far as it stands, like right now, like I if if he doesn't win, if he doesn't do this one again, then I got nothing. Basically, he he only won the Modern Warfare season because of the fact that uh, they had connection. Uh, against yeah. anybody else, basically. Well, because what what did you have? You had what three three members or four members of Chicago in in Dallas, right? But then yeah. you have one in LA. Yeah. And so it was as like... soon as that one server's gone, formal's fucked. Yeah. And the and fact it... that he did what he was able to do on on his connection. Yeah. But imagine him right. doing it more on, on, on that Dallas connection, like him being in Dallas. And that's that's the problem that everybody had. Everybody talked about it. Like, was it like Octane said it to the winds? He kept getting fines for it. Uh, Slasher kept saying stuff about it. Nobody's sitting here listening. Uh, but Krim never said anything about, about the servers. He never, he might have said a little couple things in jest, but he never it's said. Five people in Texas, man. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not, not going to say, say anything, anything yeah. about the servers. Why would like, he say anything about him him winning because he just right. chose the right spot? The, the Well, Krim had already played the mind games of the Mutineers, right? Because the Mutineers were set up the best because they had the five split where they have five 
five people all sitting on different servers. Right. And as soon as like they would get one of those servers, that person would pull host and he would fry. Right. Right. But Krim had already fucked that team because he said, hey, it's switching to 44 next year. So they're all thinking, well, we have to protect, I have to protect my spot. So they're all baiting each other, playing for stats. It just didn't go well for the mutineers. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. It'd right. be interesting. To, it'd be interesting to see Dallas this season because I I don't think like they have really good players on that team. But right. like I said, the last time, the last time we saw Krim on land, right uh, outside uh, out like not uh, not last year, but like the year before, he was. Like, so many people said it. He was so much better online than he is on land. Yeah. And then you know, yeah. and then he gets third. Which I'm still salty about. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. How did that happen, bro? Right, um, let's move on to our next topic. Ne- next topic, we're going to talk about Daisy Ridley uh, as uh, Spider-Woman. Um, and then also, uh, we're going to deal a little bit with uh, some other stuff. But that's the first topic. So, once again, like I said, Disney has a way of, of taking people from one place and putting uh, see if they, they, they're okay with doing uh, something in another film uh, because they like to keep close net with their people. They'll bring new people in, but at the same time, they'll kind of like have one person act over here in this role, then push them over into another role. Like, like Johnny Depp. Disney have been using Johnny Depp and stuff for years. Yeah. Do I think it's okay yeah i don't mind it i don't i don't know how she but sounds it, <clears> with an american accent um i, don't know how I think go. she's i've heard i've heard her american accent it's fine yeah um but again she's an actress right she's a talented actress so she's gonna learn you know well it depends on I, my, it depends on her coach ultimately because there's certain I mean, there, there's yeah, certain idiosyncrasies like, that that actual like people from the states do that people outside of the states can't can't really translate. Same reason why I, like it's very hard to try to for an American to try to do a British accent. There's some but certain the ways other way around. It's always thing. been fine. Like you know you've heard some American accents have been terrible, right? But normally when like a good British actor does the American one, it's it's decent. Whereas the other way around, the American doing the English, it's like oh that's not that's not right. Yeah, like Lenny no, uh, we... Lenny James. Yeah, yeah, Lenny James who played Morgan. He he's well we we've we've seen it right with with Tyrion. His British accent wasn't great, but you kind of put up you kind of put up with it because of. Uh, because of how good of an accent he I think is. it was old school. I think he was going for like a really, really old school. Go way. back and go back and watch it, and you understand. What oh, I mean. do. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a like I'm not British, so I I don't know, but I feel like he was doing like, like kind of like an old school British accent, like an old like, Welsh. Um, Nikolai Costa Waldo, who is yeah. by the way European, had a better British accent than Peter Dinklage did. Yeah, but he might have learned it because he's over there. No, it's. That thick European accent, that's hard to lose. And I thought yeah. he did a great job. Yeah. Um but right, yeah, so I, don't, I don't mind I don't mind her being in the role. Uh well I would have thought I'd given it somebody else a chance, but she you know. she has the chemistry with Tom Holland, right? And <laughs> also you know, we we know how Disney are. They like they like um their females to have a pretty face. All right, like you don't see a lot of, um, especially in the superhero roles, you know, they 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 have a pretty face. I mean, I don't think so she has... is pretty, but that's just me personally. <laughs> yeah, but and, and yeah, that's you personally. Good old right? Plank, so, and other people would disagree. I mean, Plank is you know, she's Plank, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, when she, you know, um, but that's her personality. I think it's her personality's ugly, so that kind of translates. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say I wouldn't say she has an ugly face. I think it, trans- yeah, it just it just bleeds into into her looks. Like I don't really care. Like or we should I, stop ripping on Brie Larson because you know one of these days she might turn out good for us, Cal, and then we be eating, we be eating our own words. Okay, no, maybe st- she she, just, she hit the gym and shit, she'll get we'll right. you know, she'll get that she'll get that curve. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she won't be plank no more. She hits the gym and she'll have. Yeah, maybe she'll do her own stunts. Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe. Well, no, she's done a couple. 
Oracle shit. She did the she wires. did the one on Endgame. She had a butt double. I don't care, but that might have been the studio. But she had a butt double. I don't want to hear it. She says she did her all own right. stunts. Whatever. That's that's not. That's not, <laughs> that's not. Um, all right, so Daisy, right, so. Daisy Ridley as Spider Woman. I like that if this is the casting choice that they're going to go with, right? Because it's not, you know, it's not something that's come up. But Daisy Ridley has come out and said that she would really like to be in the MCU and she would really like to play Spider Woman. When a, when this happens with actors. Marvel tends to cast them in the role. Yeah. We've seen it a bunch of times. Um, and I think she suits it, right? I mean, she, she was in Star Wars um, with what she had to work with because, you know, people are going to hate on the character of Rey, but I think her as an actor, she did a really good job. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I thought her and Adam Drive were like two of the best parts of the uh, of the, the sequel trilogy. You know, Adam Driver being one of my favorite, you know, characters in all the in all the Star Wars, just because of what he was able to bring as an actor to uh, right. to to the role he was playing, and then, you know, uh, yeah. Daisy Ridley. I think she did she, good with what she was given. Yeah, yeah, and and I I you know you won't see scripts like that from Marvel not anymore. They're too. You know, everything is meticulous. Like the, everything yeah. that they put into a script has a purpose well, for being there. It yeah. might be a little cheesy, and, but there's a reason uh, why. And in most today's of this stuff. in today's world, like everybody that's working on Marvel films, they're all fans, right? So right. that they're, they're all gonna want to create something that's like you know, it's the, it's that family feel as well, right? Right. The reason why everybody. You know, it's, it's going to take me back to Lord of the Rings, but the reason why everybody wanted to try so hard for Lord of the Rings is because of that family kind of, you know, yeah. you're all, you know, you all want to do really well for each other. It's not right. like an individual accolade of like, oh, I want to win an Oscar for this. Like, you're not going to win an Oscar for being a superhero. No offense, but it ain't going to happen. No. I mean, you might have like, in like some uh, People's Choice Awards, but... Outside of that, yeah, like, like the, you're the not score, in it for the individual accolades. You're you're basically in it because you want to be there. Yeah, it's either the score or the set design, animation, VFX stuff yeah. like that. They generally win, but outside of that, like you won't win best. I mean, performance for RDJ and in Endgame. I don't think that. <clears throat> I don't think that w- happened. It'd be weird, but cool. That there should happened. be a special award for his achievement as Iron Man because he played Tony Stark to a T. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, but like you that. don't want to give him a generation award. If you give him a generation award, that's basically like sealing the deal. That's like going no, on but dancing not, with the stars. Not, <laughs> yeah, but not not a generation award. You know what I mean? Like a, yeah, like you know how when an actor will play a certain role for such a long period of time, yeah. right? Uh, an example of that would be uh, Dan Radcliffe in Harry Potter. Yeah, played. Harry Potter for what 10 11 years so like a year. Oh, young. and <clears throat> like when you read the books and you watch the films like he played Harry pretty much to a T right like you look at him and he like he and everybody says it you, you look at him you look at Elijah Wood he's Harry Potter and he's Frodo mm-hmm. like you just can't there's just something and every time I look at Robert Downey Jr it's like that's Tony Stark Right, but he's been in so many other good things, and it's not because that's what we remember them for. It's because of the performance. Right. It's like Andy Circus. Every time I see Andy Circus, I'm like, "That's Gollum," and it's or not Caesar. because of that's what I remember him for. It's because of the performance. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I think I would probably get that with Ray too, with uh, with Daisy Ridley. Yeah. What what are right, so with her character Ray or you think she still has like some character role character defining role? Because yeah, I could say Ray would be, but I feel like they're like she's still got another. Well, role. she's got a long career ahead of her. Yeah, I feel like I feel like she that character defining role is still out there. Uh, that people like when they say, "Hey, it's Daisy Ridley," but it's like, and they're like, "Oh, like you every mean this time- character." It's like every time a Star Wars fan looks at her, though, though she is Rey, right? Regardless of whether you like the films or not, yeah. You know, people hated. Remember, people hated the prequels, and yeah, and oh, I know yeah, you I know. remember that time mm-hmm. era. I was young, mm-hmm. but like 
you know, I remember, you know, like older, you know, older cousins and they hated Star Wars. Uh, you know, they would they would cast George Lucas and they were like, What the hell is this? This sort of thing. And I, and I was like, I think they were more mad. They were more mad. Like, all right. So when I, uh, when the, when the Phantom Menace came out, I think the biggest talking point that people got mad about was. No, it wasn't even Jar Jar. It literally was midichlorians and, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the whole Senate shit like that that was the yes. biggest gripe that Sanctions. people had at least when i was growing up like that was the biggest gripe that people talked about at least coming out of the theater and you know it wasn't really online because online was kind of like obscure it, it was uh, yeah it was new yeah so it was more Very lines new. of like on you know tv shows and and stuff like that so that you know people and that was really the only way like when you like roger and eber like when they would come out uh and stuff like that they would talk about it but a lot of people that were fans would talk about it even like even me growing up going to like the comic book stores and stuff like that people were talking about oh you talk about these midichlorians and stuff like that trying to make the trying to make sense of the of the force and put it you know put into like a uh, like a scientific reason for the force to exist and it's not just this magical thing and actually it has to have a so people got mad about that and then the fact that they were you know the whole senate thing so people yep. got mad about that uh and because, then the, you know the second one it was it was of course i think it was this now the first the second one wasn't bad originally people didn't really give a shit about the second one and and how bad well, it was. i i i know one of the things that you know at least at talking first. to star wars fans that are, i know one of the things they were pissed about when the phantom menace originally released was the appearance of yoda he looked a little janky he did a little a little. Um, the guy looked like he'd been on a coke bender for two hundred years. Like, I, yeah, they, they. Time. I mean, they did regress a little bit in their, in their. Like, I, I don't know. They were trying to do some weird shit where they were trying to. His make appearance him look from one to two is like completely different, right? The, the, the oh, oh, yeah. Of... You talk about the second one. Like, what do you look like in the second one? Yeah, they, they did give him shit about that because, well, it, all right, so. The biggest no, but thing George for Lucas changed he changed it right because he hated the way that they made him look in the first one because yeah, in the he first looked, one they used they used the the robotic right yeah they used and the puppet George and was they, like oh that doesn't look good so then they changed just, it they still had Frank Oz on set he was still there but they just changed the the puppet and then used CGI to make it look better right but people I think mainly the people that had a problem they had a problem with the um, Yoda. And like him fighting Dooku, I that was that, a that big still that was pisses a, me off. But that was a big right? thing, like because that it's was, one of those it's one of those things where it's like the fans think they know better than George Lucas, and they fucking don't. It belongs they, the, to him. He thought about it like it, right. it belongs to him. If he wants Yoda to fight Dooku, Yoda's gonna fight Dooku, right? And, but people did think it was awesome. But there was there were people that were thinking. Uh, that Yoda is this person that is uh, like at least the way that they they grew up with him, like he's the he's kind of like this person that's above fighting, like he's so beyond using a lightsaber that you know especially with his force abilities that he doesn't need to use a lightsaber. Uh, so when he actually pulled out his lightsaber and was like power tumbling through the air, uh, people probably that's probably where they were getting from. Like he's not he's above fighting. He's so you know. You know I, I don't. I yeah. I I don't know how. I, I mean, it annoys I me, right? I I what I me was cool. watching Yoda fight is cool as shit. Like yeah. I love it. I think it's cool as shit. Right? A little gremlin flying I, around the air with a lightsaber. I've been, <laughs> I've been chomping at I've been chomping at the bit for somebody to turn yeah. around and say we're making a movie about Yoda, and I'd be like, thank God. I don't know. I like the mysteriousness of his race. I I, I thought they no, were gonna I, blow I, the I don't cover want an origin story. I don't want to. Okay, this is where he's from. I just want a movie about Yoda just fucking kicking some cis ass. Like when he was in his prime, like when he was younger, like right. Like I just like before he became Yoda a Sith just Lord, kick or, some, uh, someone's ass. Yeah, like right after like, he got into the order and got taught all that stuff before he became a master. Yeah. Like yeah, that that's why I think it'd be, be cool, cool as well because there's obviously the rumors of the Darth Vader film, which I would thoroughly enjoy because obviously apparently the whole Hayden Christensen playing Darth Vader is a, a 
prelude to him playing Darth Vader in his own movie, which I would really enjoy. And you know, Cal, I don't know if you've seen, but they are that Ryan Johnson is getting his own trilogy. Yeah, we talked about that. Last uh, we week. spoke about it last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's go quickly back to Daisy Ridley. Yeah, because I think she'd be good for the role. Final. Um, is Spider Woman a blonde or a brunette? It's a brunette. She's a brunette. So. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Spider Gwen is a is is yeah she's the blonde silver head. and yeah. this is what I was gonna say right with the casting of um, Jennifer Lawrence as Sue Storm, I thought that she would have made a good Spider Gwen, right? It would have had to have been a little bit after Thomas uh, as Sp- uh, Peter had left school and gone to college. Which they had kind another of... girl though. Huh? They had another girl that played Gwen Stacy but, in the uh, but, uh, in the first one, Homecoming. Yeah, but she's never mentioned by name. Yeah. Well, they can even have the girl that. All right, never mind. They, they, the girl that Ned was with. That's not. That's not Gwen Stacy. That was some other girl. No. Yeah, she's a really no, that's red the, shirt. No. Um. No, I think that who is going to be playing Gwen Stacy is Chloe Grace Moretz. I think that's a good casting choice for Spider Gwen. I like it. I like it. I think, I think it's you. Know, when I look at like, okay, you need a blonde. She has to be young. You know, she you know around Tom Holland's age. I think Chloe Grace Moretz like she fits. She fits yeah. the you know she she fits that role. Yeah. I th- she's also, you know, she's also a really good actress as well. So oh, yeah. that'd be interesting. All right, Cal. Let's, uh, let's right, move so, on to our last topic. Last topic is whether or not games should be put into uh, the medium of movies or whether they should be TV shows. Or whether uh, they belong as TV shows, yeah. I don't know. I, that's that's no, interesting. I, I, the reason I thought about this topic, right, is because over the years we've seen a lot of video games translate into films but I've always felt like they they've only they've only ever been bad because there's so much for them to do, but like cramming it into two hours is like there's not enough time. You know, and this is why there's this extended series of the Borderlands. I know it's a movie series, but I think it's gonna work because it's extended. So that they're on about doing like six films, right, for the Borderlands because of the the vast majority like the the vast universe that it's in which is good because I, I feel like with borderlands it would drag too much in the sense of a in the sense of like a tv show it would definitely work but i feel like you know you want big actors to play the, the big roles right borderlands is a popular game you know you don't really you know actors aren't going to be wanting to tie big actors at least aren't going to be wanting to tie themselves down and like a tv show that's going to span eight seasons and right you know it might turn out to be the next game of thrones but they're not going to want to um, be there for that long i Whereas, think there are specific uh i feel like there's specific movie or games that could be translated into a movie um, yeah. that don't have a lot of like exposition like right out front it's just intermittent uh, like like intermediate throughout the 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 game they basically exposit uh certain things yeah. uh like when you think about destiny like destiny uh, they basically just say hey there was this ball called the traveler and one day he just stopped doing stuff and he basically just resurrected people uh from the dead uh, that who carry light and they have these little because things that are called is ghosts. It, that... Is it a film? Is it a film they're doing for destiny or TV show? Cause uh, Netflix has be... that as well. Oh no, they might be doing a, a I think a, it's TV. TV I think show. it's TV. I don't see why they would do a because... TV show. A movie would suffice because it's, there's, like I said, there's not a lot to, to go like exposit, uh, what goes on. Like a movie could basically sum up, uh, the first destiny, uh, at least all the way up to Crota. Or, yeah. Yeah, all the way up to, like, the Taken King. Uh, it can literally just, you know, hey, the... the uh, like, Or they could do, like, if they're actually going to do, like, the the story of the of the Vex, they can basically talk about Vault of Glass and stuff like that, the the big baddie on that. Um, I, well, I think... I think a list... 
I think our list was like uh, it was a bunch of TV shows, and it was like Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect. Um, th- there's a lot of. But see, the Mass uh, Effect I can get behind because Mass Effect has a large like lore behind it. Yeah, there's like, like Fallout. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's like a bunch of games in there. Final Fantasy. There, yeah, like I said, there's there. Like Halo, Halo doesn't necessarily need to have like uh like that needs to be a movie. Well, they, they, were, need to they be were gonna show. do movies, right? So Peter Jackson and Steven Spielberg were gonna do movies yeah, together. And, and then, then Peter Jackson got caught up doing the Hobbit, so he mm-hmm. never did Halo. And then And then Spielberg did. So for Spielberg some reason shit. Spielberg was <laughs> for some reason Spielberg well he because didn't he do the um what the 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 movie that we got, like it was like a a TV show that was like small parts of a TV show that was like a movie. You talking about the something falling unto dawn yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. Fall, yeah. Was Fall that Spielberg? It might have been. It might have been John Blanc or uh, what's his name, uh, Peter Blancamp or whatever his name is. That might have been him. I'm not sure. I mean, I know they because did like the little, the little weird thing. Yeah, because obviously, like now Spielberg is doing a Minecraft film. I mean that that's a movie you could do because you, you know you go and talk about the Ender Dragon and stuff like that. I mean, there, like I said, there's certain movie, certain I think certain games ha, are can be translated into a movie like Doom. Uh, not saying that Doom movie was good, but no, I feel it's like trash. I, I hate feel the like fact that the Rock's credited in that as well. Right, that movie I, sucks. I feel like that movie could have been done a shit ton better, and the you know they could have it's not a lot it's like resident oh, Evil. there's not a lot of gears, lore that gears of war gears of war that doesn't is need another, a movie. that doesn't need a no movie that's a, a that's TV a tv show that's really? a tv show yeah i'm pretty sure because it might be a movie though but i know netflix is doing it because it's um they're on about so terry cruz has been casting it and so has batista but i don't know how far it's gone train and marcus phoenix marcus phoenix is batista yeah yeah mm. I can um, see that. Uh, I'm trying to think. If so obviously they they did the Assassin's Hollywood. Creed film, right? Yeah. They did the Assassin's Creed film. Didn't really work as a film, right? So now they're doing the whole Ezio story in a TV show, and they think it will work a lot better because with Assassin's Creed, there's a lot of explaining. There's a ton of history. It's a vast, like vast, expansive game. You know, so there's a lot of like explaining and and things that you need to do for the story to work. And I think doing a TV show is better than a movie I mean, series. Yeah, but like when you think about okay, so there's <clears throat> how many how many movies out there like or how many games got turned into movies? And like okay, so you have two main ones that come to mind when you think about games that were turned into movies that basically like did this weird shit where they basically. Uh, like some person is transported into another world and that's where the game world exists. Like you got Assassin's Creed, then you got Monster Hunter World. Granted, Monster Hunter World was was okay, was good visually and the story was kind of cool. The, the um, story, yeah. But it still had that same trope of... But it's the, like... Uh, it's not describing... It's like one of those... It's like one of those where it doesn't try and cram too much in. It's like an intro into a world, you know, and then it leaves yeah. you off at, at a teaser... No, but I it's love like Warcraft. The fact that they... Like when you think about Warcraft, like Warcraft, they yeah, didn't, that series they... got cancelled, though, right? No, like I was that, talking about the movie. The, yeah, the movie, the move, the rest of them got cancelled, is what I'm saying. Well, well, right, because they there was a lot of stuff that was put into the I think the movie that wasn't actually in the lore. So, you know, uh, when yeah, they, and the when movie's they did not the, that good either. Well, it's because everybody was thinking it was going to be World of Warcraft. It was going to be the World of Warcraft movie, but in, in all actuality, it's warcraft so they're trying to figure out how like the fell came into play they didn't but they didn't talk about like okay so they talk about goldan but they don't talk about the pit boss uh the the pit bosses or or where the fell comes from like sargeras was the creator of the fell they don't talk about any of that and i think that's a big disservice that so i think a show would actually do a lot better yeah because it talks about that's what i'm saying like yeah video games need a show rather than a movie because cramming that all that yeah. information into two hours it's not possible yeah because i mean when right? you think it's... about like warcraft like the, the 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 lore of warcraft is actually one of the most interesting because it talks about like how the planet that we're on or the the azeroth the planet that they're on is basically this 
it's it's basically a seed like a titan seed and it like the other titans are wanting to protect it because it's the strongest one and you got this this other titan who's a mad titan and he wants to destroy it so he basically creates the fell and the legion and then he they give the stuff to the orcs that's where you get green orcs and shit like that and that's when they come over here into the you know azeroth to try to destroy shit so that's where, but nobody ever explains where the fell comes from in the movie. They're just like, oh, it's this weird shit that nobody, it hasn't been talked about in so long. And like in the movie, it's hinted that Sargeras is the one that's speaking to Medivh, but it's never stated outright that he's the reason why this shit is happening the way it is. Like the, that the person who's speaking to him, they never say anything about it. Uh, even though Mediv finally realizes it, Cadgar realizes it. So, like I said, it's a whole bunch of shit that they missed in the. And, and this kind of person who's kind of a rookie when it comes to 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 WoW lore and just World of Warcraft in general. Yeah. But the lore is awesome. Like the idea that they have old gods, which are basically like these big Lovecraftian monsters that want to come into, uh, you know, into Azeroth and destroy everything and shit like that. That's cool as hell. But I don't know, like, like I said, there's certain movies, like, I think they could do Mortal Kombat, that could definitely be a movie, because for all intents and purposes, the games are movies, the same thing with, with Gears, Gears is technically a movie, when you play it, you play it yeah. like a movie, so yeah. there's a way that you could do that, you could do well, it's Halo, like, um, one um, of the big things that Activision announced, I can't, I think it was in 2019, is that, you know, doing a movie series, Tom Hardy was casting that very quickly, but they also want to do uh, an expanded universe with zombies, which is not going to be movies, but they're on about doing a TV show. I mean, it's I, I think it's still in early works, but I think one of the things that they want to do is, because it takes so much work to work on these brand new maps every single time, I think one of the things they want to do is have the, the ether story with the four main characters of Rick Toth and Ta I, I think they want to expand it and make it into a TV show because obviously we've seen it. Zombies is obviously something that works. It is, but I don't know. I like, think, but I think with, I think with college, it would have to be done differently. It would be, it would have to be done something like, um, no, cause obviously the mechanics around the game, like they're set around the player, whereas when you have somebody like it would, somebody would have to be like almost plucking the strings of the zombies for the for their. It would have there have to be like reasons behind it. Yeah, you know, I, I think they were. I think they were getting there in Call of Duty Zombies, but like I, I like the concept of, I like the concept of using Call of Duty Zombies and the characters as like a stepping stone to start a TV show. I think that, you know. Because there's law behind it as well. Yeah, I just have a problem with them doing another zombie show. Granted, yeah, it's probably it's it's probably a lot. Di it, it is a lot different than than Walking Dead. But I think people are fatigued from the Walking Dead, not just because of the shit that they did, or the shitty mistakes that they made uh, in the screen and then the script and the decisions that they made to get rid of specific people. But I think people are just naturally. Uh, um, they're naturally like they're kind of done with zombies. Like everybody's kind of went through that phase where they watch the shows and they're just done with it. So I, I think that's, I think a movie would definitely benefit a lot better than, than a TV show when it comes to that. But anyways, yeah, just, the thing um, is there's too much to fit in there. Right. So th this is, this is my point as I'm making is like certain games can be movies. It's like they're yeah. doing the uncharted series they work as movies because they're like Tomb Raider. Yeah. Like Nathan right? So, Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, you take, um, you know, a game with an expanded universe, for example, like World of Warcraft, doesn't work in movies because of how expansive the, you know, the world is. That's why I think one of the things that I love about Steven Spielberg is, like, he always said that if he was going to have a real crack at the Ready Player, like, you know, because with Ready Player One, he was just doing, like, a straight story, right? Whereas if he was allowed to delve into the world a bit more, he would be able to do a lot more stuff, but he would do it inside a TV show because he loves the world that was created inside right. of the Oasis. Right. 
I think it's interesting. Because, um, well, there's obviously a direct sequel that came out with the book. Yeah, and they then, came out, yeah. And then they're going to be coming out with the um, movie. Spielberg did say that he would he would love to do a TV show on it one day just because he loves the, the whole world of the Oasis. And I think it would be super interesting as well. Yeah. All right, so uh, um, the last little bit is just talking about random last-minute things. Uh, so first one, uh, Walking Dead comes back Walking next Dead. Sunday. Um, yep, next Sunday. And which, uh, yes, it comes <coughs> back next Sunday, but you can go online to AMC Plus and watch it right now, which I'm not going to do that. I keep it traditional when it comes to watching these shows on Sunday. Uh, we watched walking dead since the get so it's a traditional thing to yep. watch it on sundays um but uh it's not season 11 which is weird to me it's um okay it's it, i did not know that yeah it's it's the it's block c or, or uh, block c of season 10 yeah it's block c which is weird because that was i was mad because they waited to do the season finale until after all the shit with Corona, then they just they just bleeped out, you know, blurted out a, a, a an episode. What well, I think kind of probably... did shit for uh, season finale. That was no offense. That was a shit season finale uh, at the time. Now it's apparently not because people probably you know probably said some shit like that's not a season finale. Like most season finales have like a, a what the shit moment, and that didn't have it all. Yeah, like, I was going to say, like, because in that one, you have, like, Maggie coming back, but there was no, like, well, where the f- fuck are we going now sort of thing, right? Cause right. I've, I've, so, with these six episodes, I was confused, because I was like, I know season 11 is the last season. I was like, this isn't fucking season 11, right? But no. now that you've cleared that up for me. Yeah. So, this is, like, block C of season 10. Yeah. Right, so we have six episodes in this block, and I, I would guarantee because of Corona restrictions, this is why they've done it like this because they probably want you know, uh, Danny, uh, deny you know deny to be in it. They probably want Andrew Lincoln to be in it just because it's the last season. Well, if you look at the trailers, no. look at the trailers, you'll see people from the the Commonwealth. Now I haven't been keeping up, and and people get mad at me for that, but I've been keeping up with the um. Worlds Beyond. I haven't, I haven't been keep, no. <clears throat> oh, the Worlds Beyond. Yeah, thing? I haven't been keeping haven't up with it. it. But it's it's basically like on the opposite side of it, where it basically talks about like the the Commonwealth. Uh, it kind of delves into that a little bit. So yeah, uh, I think we're gonna get an answer because they. I know they were saying that they were gonna talk about they were gonna make a movie about Rick, uh, but I don't think that they're gonna make a movie about Rick necessarily until after the series concludes uh just because i don't think they have enough time with with corona the way it is yeah i don't think I, they've even I, started mm-hmm. so i think when when season because uh see the, the how the seasons work they start in what october and they go all the way until uh january or no no december then no, they the, do mid-season, so the se- mid-season break no the season <clears throat> no no season season starts september Okay. Yes. Right, end, okay. end of September. Right. Runs to like what the uh, so it runs for eight weeks. So that's two months, right? So you, it runs through October and November. So it finishes in December. Then you kind of have right. that break block. Yeah. And then you and then it goes uh, normally February to yeah. like uh, May, Ish. and then you have Comic Con. So then you have the new trailer and the yeah. new stuff for the. And then it starts back up, but because and then it that starts whole, back up again because you know 2020 happened. They weren't really. F- I mean, they were filming, but they weren't filming like enough to basically put together a season. Well, I so, I know they 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 have been. They're still filming, right? They're still filming stuff for the uh, here and here and there. But that's what I'm saying. Like that they're was filming all... slowed down. So I think yeah. that's why they're only coming out. That's why I think that's why they're doing the block C is because they're like, we don't have enough film to do a full like 16 episode season. So we're just going to do, you know, so uh, with, with, the, with the, com- with the Commonwealth stuff, right? Rick's, Rick's supposed to be a part of this, isn't he? Right. He, he, I mean, he went with Janice and, and they basically, what's her name? I think it's Janice. Yeah. Yeah. So they they went on the the went on the chopper and that has a Commonwealth on it and everybody's saying that is so and I think it is pretty sure that is a Commonwealth so well because I I I did say that when we got that episode which is I think still 
one of the best episodes we've had of The Walking Dead just because of how well it was created and mm-hmm. you know how emotional it made you feel throughout oh, yeah. like the the whole the, the whole yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like going uh, through I, Rick's I, trials and tribulations. <laughs> you, I, I remember saying, Cal, I remember sitting there and I'd be like, right, so the writing team is still there. I'm like, what the fuck have they been doing for these past, you know, since like the end of sort of season, uh, the last episode of season six or whatever it was. You know, remember when we got introduced to Negan and I was like, oh shit's about to hit the fan. Yeah. And then we got that first episode and I was like, oh shit. Well, that's be- then- that was before Angela Kang took over though. Angela Kang took over and that's like she that like the Rick dying season that was Angela Kang that wasn't that wasn't uh Scott Gimple at all he basically took a back seat because of the fan outrage of him killing off uh him killing off Coral like he got he he took a back seat to that shit and Angela Kang took the front no but I thought the reason they killed off um I thought the reason that they killed off Carl was because Chandler Riggs was like, you know, had to go through, you know, lots of school stuff. No. His no, he, no not at all. Um, he was going to a school, I can't say because uh, I know a couple people that know him. Um, so I can't, you know, divulge where he goes to school, but yeah, he, he was going to go to UGA. Yeah. And he was going to, he was buying a house and everything. He was buying a house, I think right down the street from, uh, uh, from, uh, Norman Reedus or right around this general area or maybe up there in Athens. Uh, cause that's where UGA yeah. is. So he was yeah. going to buy a house. He literally asked Scott and Gimple, uh, yo, am I good? So they, they did the contract. It was a one plus one. So basically the one plus one is like he gets the one year and then the get the next year is one of those like optional years. And he didn't think anything about this. And even his dad goes on record and says something about it uh, after the fact of him getting off uh, where he looked at the schedule. He looked at the script and halfway through the season, he gets off. So he did get that one plus one, but it wasn't full. And he basically went on a, his dad, him and his dad kind of like went on a tirade and was like, yo, what the shit? Like, like you told me I was good to buy a house. I bought a house. Da, 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 da. I was going to go to school down here at UGA. And now I have now, you know, I now I'm basically having to find a new job. Not to mention the fact that Carl in the comics is the only one that survives, uh, among everybody else. Like Carol doesn't survive. She like offs herself because she can't get with yeah, uh, she, Tyrese. Yeah. <laughs> so like she's gone, but in the show she's there and I, I get it. I get it. But So, like, you know, Scott Gimple, basically, his whole thing was he was getting too old for his role of being at a specific age in the in the comics versus the TV show. But what pissed me off the most was at the very end of the app at at the very end of the season after like Negan finally gets, you know, caught, captured, put in prison. They do a time jump of like, what, five years? Was it five years? I don't even know how long it was. Judith went from how being like how six it? to fucking twenty. They did a three. Right? No, it was a three year jump. They did a three year jump. That would have made three. that would have made him right in line with his actual age versus the character's age. Literally, like, but that was Angela Kang did the time jump. She's the one that did the time jump. So it wasn't that it was implausible to do this weird time jump. They could have done it. But right after they, right after, no, I think they did a one year time jump and then it. No, no, okay, it so was it's like, three it was, it then was five. five years. It was three, it was then five. it was five. Uh, oh. It was right. three, then it was yeah. five year, uh, a five year time jump. So it he would have been exactly the age that he, they needed him to be. So that was their excuse was <laughs> he's too old for the role that he's playing. And then they do a time jump right after. So it put a lot of bad taste in people's mouths. So that's where you get, you know, like Denai Gutierrez. She was like, I bet, run it. Uh, and then you have uh, Rick was like, I bet, I'm out. Like everybody knew what was happening. But nobody can say anything about it. So, you know, it was just, that's how it was. Now, Lauren Cohen, she lo- she left, I think, a little bit because of that. But mostly because her, uh, she didn't get top billing. Uh, because she was, you know, she was getting 
you know, her billing was a little bit lower than, than other people like Norma Reedus and uh, uh, Melissa McBride. So she basically asked for a raise and they didn't give it to her. So she was like, I right, bet, Brendan, I'm going to go over here to Whiskey Cavalier. They're offering me more money. Uh, but she left her, co her contract was left open ended. So that way she could come back. So, ah, okay. All right, but it anyways, starts to make a little bit more sense. Um, so uh, you know, with the whole yeah, it's with uh, the whole kind. Of, the show is the show has pissed me off for a long time. Yeah, because I like Negan. You no, know, they yeah, I like the whole story. St line. I still like him. I do like the story. I just felt like it went on for so goddamn long. Well, in the comics, it goes on for so dang long. Like that, I mean, the comics, like, yeah, that's but it's a good like, portion of the volumes is the Negan because he did a no, lot of shit. No, but it's like, you know, you know, you have like, obviously in comics, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can show, you know, because, you know, yeah, there's more, you know, there's more time to do all that shit, right? But right. we had th pretty much three seasons of, well, two seasons, two full seasons of the whole Negan stuff. Right. <clears throat> and then we knew we were getting the whispers afterwards. Right. Um, but the whole, you know, it just, it dragged on so long to the point where there were so many episodes that felt like filler that I was just getting pissed off. Yeah. For like DBZ. Yeah, right. We're then, running up on uh two hours. So, well, I mean, we're at 140, 140 right now. Um, okay. What's the other one we were going to talk about? I know we we're going to talk about one more thing and I can't remember what it was. You might have to help me out with that one. <clears throat> uh, oh, um, we were going to talk about House of the Dragon. Oh, the the Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to be quick on this one because I feel like we could talk about this yeah. at another time because we, we've really yeah. been on a tangent and we're running on two hours and I don't want to. I don't want to run out two hours onto a, a thing. So I feel like yeah. we should definitely get up with that on our next episode. Um, and then okay. cut this one here because we're almost at an hour and 45 and yeah, I know yeah. a lot of people aren't going to watch an hour and 45 minute long, long podcast, at least as long as it's not with, you know, any big celebrities on there. So I'm not trying to downgrade yeah. us. I'm just saying like, you know, it's a long time for you to be on there. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I appreciate this guy. Sorry. I'm, whatever I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, up there. <laughs> appreciate this guy for being on here uh like i said we're gonna get it next tuesday it's gonna be episode four and we're gonna be talking about the season finale of wandavision and we're gonna see how that affects the entirety of the marvel mcu leading into captain america or yeah captain america winners no not captain america it's gonna be a uh, falcon, winter falcon soldier, and, the winter soldier. Yeah. and how it will affect the other tv shows and movies going on further um, and then whatever else comes up, uh, as far as the CDL super week, um, leading into, uh, the next major and whatever crazy topics or shenanigans happen in pop culture, uh, we will yep. definitely be talking about, um, at some point, at some point I do want to talk about Johnny Depp. Um, uh, with the, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp storyline. Yeah. Or? Yeah. And the reason I want to talk about it is because I feel like it's unfair. Yeah. It's unfair. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, there's a reason I, I want to talk about it because I still feel like he has a place in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Warner Brothers, yeah. We're going to talk about it, but definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before I start again. Yeah, yeah. All Sorry, right. So, Cal, Cal's, uh, Cal wants a podcast to end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It, it's <laughs> not that. It's, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody, you know, listening or watching it on YouTube yeah. is probably going to, or, or watching it on Twitch is going to be like, all right, you know, y'all need to wrap this up. We're, we're going to go on a tangent. All right. So, um, everybody that's watching it on YouTube, appreciate y'all giving this a view. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Everybody that's watching on Twitch, uh, if you don't go, uh, don't forget to go ahead and follow. If you see the social media is right down there, uh, go ahead and follow them. And then also go over to this guy over here and uh, follow him at uh, Trex97 on Twitter. Uh, so we'll catch up with y'all next <clears throat> Tuesday at 8.30, promptly, Eastern, of course, because, uh, yep. you know, East Coast for the win. Uh, I know it's five, year, uh, five hours ahead over there with this guy, but uh, I will definitely catch up with y'all later, and I'm pretty sure he will. And appreciate everybody coming in. It's your boy, Cal. Peace.